everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping in. Uh, we are going to uh, continue our series on the family. It's been a minute since I, I hit you last, but we're going to continue this. Uh, but before I do, I want to remind you, uh, you know the routine. If you like what you hear or see, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. If you have followed me long enough to know the work that we do in the community, the depth of the research and development and program implementation that has taken place through me, through uh, the Odyssey Project over the last 30 years, and you want to see it continue, you want to reach people, go in the description box and give. Uh, prime example, someone reached out to me this morning about their son. Their son is struggling. Their son is going through a transitional phase and he's struggling heavily and will likely end up either suffering majorly, uh, just getting by in life, or uh, where so many of our young males end up in prison. And the thing is, the resources aren't, aren't there. And in the past, I just simply ate it and kept going. But I'm at a point now where I'm building and I'm doing things and I have maxed what I am able to do for free. And so I'm, you know, and so the thing is, most of the people are gonna need that type of help or not gonna be able to afford it. We need to create some type of interim program that is going to cover at least the basic cost of that. And that's just one thing that doesn't count the research into mental health and so many other things that we're doing. Um, and, and, and let me give, give you a little bit of transparency here. Um, you know, those who know me know that I have a large family. I love my kids. Um, and I have my own son. I'm not going to name him, uh, but I have my own son, uh, that's struggling, uh, with mental health. So I'm going all in for everybody else's family, but I've also got to look out for mine. And, uh, and I will, I'll go hard. I'll give everything I got, but you got to understand that. If I'm going into the community, I need the community to be willing to come to me. Uh, and I'll go out and I'll give, but I'm not going to make my family suffer to service a community that isn't going to participate. Uh, and there are people out there that need us, and we can't keep turning our head to them. Uh, with that being said, look, I'm going to get in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a small segment from uh, my 19th book, Born in Captivity. I let somebody barter it and they beat it up. I'm real particular about my books. They'll get used and worn, but I normally take care of cover. So, but I let somebody use it anyway. But let's see. I had it and sit up and flipped it and turned it. Let me see if I can get back to it. I had a particular thing I wanted to touch on. Here we go. And there we is. There we is. I know what I said. Uh, look, I have invested my entire adult life and pre-adulthood to gaining an understanding of the enigmatic issues that plague the black community. Uh, not only have I done research, not only have I peer-reviewed thousands of papers um, and written and written 27 books and, and going, uh, got two more coming in 2024. Um, I have been boots on the ground. I have been engaged. This is my love. This is my passion. But we need to understand things. How often have you heard me say that we suffer because we don't understand how things work? We want to engage and judge everything and react to everything emotionally. We want to act upon how we feel instead of acting upon what we know. And my goal has been to inform. And it's not sensational. It's not exciting it's not, and that's the problem if it doesn't make us laugh if it doesn't make us dance if it isn't something that excites the, the the and stimulates us in that way we don't have any interest in it and the problem is the very things that will advance us are probably not going to be exciting they're probably not going to be comfortable but we are going to have to be willing to engage those things well just one paragraph. I'm going to read one paragraph, then I'm going to break this down. This is from Chapter 10, Special Education as a Socioeconomic Weapon. But there's a specific paragraph I want to talk on, and I want to get onto that particular thing. And I'm not going to be long. 
The primary thing of Carter G. Woodson's masterpiece, The Miseducation of the Negro, is that withholding the true and holistic history of any group will culminate in an identity crisis. And when a race of people suffer a, suffers an ident identity crisis, they will begin to fracture along the lines of social responsibility and individual purpose. My goal in writing The Miseducation of Black Youth in America was not simply to point out a nefarious and inadequate educational system, but the failure of African Americans to holistically educate our own, especially in historical significance and racial socialization. There is no sense of identity and purpose on a collective level. Now, the, the, type, the chapter itself is something that we really need to discuss, and we're going to get all into uh, the special education referrals of young black males, specifically as a socioeconomic weapon. But that's this point in here about an identity crisis, and you hear me talk uh, incessantly about an identity crisis, but most people don't understand what that means. When you remove the history of a people, when you uh, interrupt their practicing of their own values, interests, and principles, their value system as an ecosystem, a governed ecosystem within their collective. When you do that, you subsequently interrupt the awareness of who they are. When a person isn't aware of who they are, they are also unaware of their responsibilities on a social level. They're uh, unaware of their capabilities. They're unaware of why they belong, why they are here. One of the reasons that there's so much disruption from young black males roughly around 13 to 15 is because this is the time of life when males are looking and going through a process we call adolescent self-discovery. What is that? That's when black, I mean, that's when men, period, begin to uh, at the age, like I said, 14, 15, 13 sometimes, start to say, okay, what am I going to be? What am I going to do? Where's my place in the world? How do I express my innate power as a man? How do I belong? What is my purpose here? How do I relate in God's plan? All these questions are really questions that they naturally begin to search. At that, uh, If there's no true clarity, it ends up being expressed in disruption and frustration. This is when they begin to act out in class. This is when they get gain a proclivity for violence. This is when they're more than likely to turn towards drugs. This is when they're going to be most acceptable to suggestion. This is when they're going to be told by others who they are because we forgot to tell them. Uh, when I wrote The Miseducation of Black Youth in America, which was my 16th book, uh, one of the things that I focused on was the redefining of the word education because we have come to believe that education is the attainment of academic skills. And so we focus heavily on academia and we feel that if we can get equal footing in academia, it automatically means equal output and equal access in the world. And that's not how it works. See, um, academia was sold to 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 us and none non blacks alike as the end all be all but the true nature of being valuable in the world and having an economic floor on which to stand is not solely based on academics it's based on expertise it's based on the development of a specific skill that allows you to be valuable in a particular environment in which you are providing a service in a way that People cannot get it anywhere else. The more unique your service, the, the higher level and standard at which it is delivered, the more you're the more solid you're anchored. And that comes from being willing to develop yourself, know who you are, know what your skill set is, know what your gifting is. One of the things that true uh, that the basic public public education uh, public education system does not do is to explore the gifting of the child, to look at the unique nuances of each individual that makes them special. It is to create a unified, universal, uniform system so that everybody's prepared to go into the workforce. School isn't for the student, school is for the workforce. School is preparing students to be easily, more easily trained, more easily to adapt to certain environments, and to perform as requested. 
the entire grading system, the entire testing system, the entire environment is based on making sure they are good employees. Being good employees rarely equates to being financially secure. Being good employees rarely equates to a fully achieving the natural demand within oneself to rise up and be their best. They are normally in a subjugated uh, environment in which they are forced to acquiesce to the suggestions and the control of someone else. When it comes to a man, that is unnatural and it normally ends up in frustration and either brokenness, anger, frustration, violence, or all of the above. And we act like we don't know, well, we don't act like we don't know that this is engineered. This isn't just a simple mishap. This is an engineering of subpar performance, subpar engagement, and a disconnection between what we used to be, what we desire to be, and who we are, and we fail at it because we are failing to what? Properly socialize young black males at an early age. And a lot of that is because we have 1.5 million men missing in the community. So it's hard to see it modeled on a natural scale, uh, especially within the inner city. Why? Because most of the men aren't in the home. We went from 1960 where 75% of black children were born into two parent households to now 75 to 76% born into single parent households where the, house of, the head of household is a female. And that comes with a bunch of different challenges. No matter how financially affluent a woman is, no matter how intelligent she is, no matter how emotionally masterful she is, no matter how much she knows what a man is supposed to do, she cannot teach a uh, boy to be a man. She can tell him what she believes a man is, but the vast majority of manhood is an emulation process. It is a process of observance, a process of coaching, a process of be, being able to observe it and then want to become it. And then having the person that you want to be like give you the inside scoop on why. Why I do this. Why I do this. This is what's going to be expected of you. There's this dope uh, track out right now by this cat from... Um, Canada. He's a rapper, but he also sings. He has a country twang to him when he sings. And the name of the song is uh, To Be a Man. And it talks about all the challenges we face as men. And this isn't about black men. This is men. So you can't just say black men are whining. This is men. Matter of fact, the vast majority of the people, because he has this mega remix where it's like eight people on this track, the vast majority of them aren't black. But they're talking about the challenges they face as men. And what happens now to me, understanding the complete social dynamic, I understand that if it's that bad, bad for a white man, if it's that bad for an Italian man, then it's uh, exponentially worse for a black man. Those men experience power just in the nature of being within the patriarchy that controls black man has the least amount of power because he's the greatest threat. This is the reality. It doesn't it does not in itself justify or create or give an excuse but it says we have to understand the context from that position if we don't understand the context from that position we keep sitting up judging things from a faulty platform so here we go and this song talks about everything and all how all this stuff is internalized well just imagine being a young black male and not having anybody because one of the biggest things it says is that you know i'm gonna tell my son the same I, uh, in other words I was given the game by my father, and I'm going to tell my son the same. And I'm going to do everything I can to prepare him to do what it is to be a man because it's a thankless job. Uh, how many times do you hear, why should I praise him for that when he's doing what he's supposed to do? When everything in social society is about praise. You praise your child when they do something, when they're developing and they're learning and they're growing. Everybody gets praise. You get praise at work for doing your job. You get a raise. You get praise. Uh... And, and accolades when you do anything in sports. Everybody gets it except the man doing his job. He's supposed to do it. You don't get praise. But the crazy thing is God designed the man to respond to praise, affirmation, confirmation from a woman more than anything else. If you want to get a man to do something, tell him he's doing it well. Tell him how awesome he is when he's doing it. Now, I'm not saying it's your responsibility to build his self-esteem, but I'm saying it's definitely not your responsibility to tear it down.
And what I can tell you is that the more you build it, the more he trusts you, the more he fight for you, the more he'll die for you. And these are the things that we aren't teaching our daughters. These are the things that we aren't explaining to our son. This is why you're frustrated. You're in an environment where you're constantly being told you, you ain't nothing but. And mom, stop telling the kid he ain't going to be nothing. Dad, stop tell, telling your son you ain't blah, 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 because he can't run the 40 and 4-2. What you speak to your child as the parent is going to have a massive impact because you are the primary label giver in the developmental ages. In the ages from birth until seven years old, the things you say to your kids are going to have a massive impact because they are still developing. They are still downloading. Their primary brave wave, brainwave pattern is theta, meaning they're downloading everything. They're completely open to suggestion. What you're telling them about themselves is actually sticking. And once they make up in their mind that that's who they are, their subconscious lock, I mean, their, their self-image locks in, their self concept about who they are their subconscious starts to recycle that information over and over again and once they accept that's who they are the very nature of survival and sanity demands that they behave that way the way that we maintain our sanity and our balance is life is to perform our self-image we literally walk every day behaving like we see ourselves and believe ourselves to be. We're never going to consistently excel above that, and we will guard going below it. But we will not exceed it unless we change how we see ourselves. So then it is our responsibility to properly and holistically educate uh, our youth. And how I define this in uh, the miseducation of black youth is the holistic education of ch uh, of black youth is the preparation and empowerment of our children to grow up and go out into a world that's inherently hostile towards them and not only compete but win. So it's not just about academic skills while they may play a part. It's about a sense of understanding and self. It's about a willingness, willingness to explore our own identity, to search for our gifting, to explore our gifting, to hone our gifting, to beat on our talent, to beat on our skills, to gain a level of expertise that we become so excellent at what we do we have the goal. He who has the goal makes the rules. The game changes when you get the goal. We haven't taught our children how to get the goal. We're still operating on paradigms created and given to us to lock us in, to chain us in, to create para uh, parameters and ceilings to keep us from getting to where we are capable of getting and we buy into it and we teach it with a vigor we and we uh reinforce it with vitriol we sit up and we will that's stupid don't do this you better get this go do this and the whole time you're humbling and breaking someone into a place that does not serve them you've got to ask does it serve my interest or someone else's it who's benefiting from my suffering if well when i find the person that's the person the thing of the entity the corporation the government whatever that's benefiting from my sir, uh from my suffering i can no longer with conscious sit up and invest in said system i can no longer sit up and invest in said uh process i must now find a way to circumvent and move outside of it so that i can function on my own behalf for my own interests and protect the values, interests, and principles of my family. That's the responsibility for a man. But what happens is what? We send them to school. They are immediately identified and seen as what? Threats. So uh, on a disproportionate level, young black males are referred to special education early as five years old. Why? The vast majority of the teaching population is what? White middle-aged women. There are hardly any black males in the teaching force now. Completely ran them off. Outside of coaches that have to teach as a part of their job responsibility, it's hard to find a black male coach. Or if you find a black male, they're effeminate. That's a problem. And then the only thing that's really caping for our boys are our black women. But they are, their, their numbers are dwindling as well. And they, even though they love young black males and they fight and they go to bat. And I know this because I spend a lot of time working with school systems. So I see it. This isn't me just talking out the side of my neck. This is years and years and years of work 
going to war with school districts and superintendents and all this stuff for the betterment and, 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 and improvement of environments for young black males specifically, but for black kids in total. So what I'm trying to tell you is there's a problem and we're not dealing with it. And so what happens is these kids are getting caught up in this with these teachers who see them as a threat. So they see little Johnny, five years old. He's a threat to her because she doesn't know how to do him. She can't relate to him. His movement and his behaviors are incomprehensible to her. She doesn't understand. And the second thing is, because she doesn't have a cultural awareness of who he is, she can't have a possible understanding of what type of home life he might have. Because I guarantee it's different than the home life she has at home and the home life she grew up in. So she doesn't understand his nervousness. And the first thing is, if we really truly want to be honest about it, Children learn better when they're allowed to move around. Children, the more movement you get, the more emotional engagement you get, the more you get to allow them to be actively engaged in moving, the better they learn. It is not intuitive. It is not natural to teach young children sitting still for hours at a time. That's absolutely ridiculous, but yet that's the academic system that they're supposed to, but that isn't designed to properly and holistically empower and prepare them. That's designed to teach them to be controlled, to become docile, to become maneuverable and manipulatable so that they can be controlled throughout life. That's why you have to be at the forefront and say, you know what, that's not happening on my watch. And you can't be a part of the problem. Watch what you say to your kid. You are the primary level giver. When I when I developed the concepts of visionetics, which is the uh, psychological concept I use in working with my clients to allow them to achieve greater things uh, with the Visionetics Institute. Uh, when I designed it, I designed it built on the foundation of self-image. How do you see yourself? And then what vision do you have outside of that? And how does it grow out? You develop from the... I can't make anybody develop into anything until I can reconstruct their self-image if it's flawed. If the self-image says you're worthless, if the self-image says you're a failure, if the self-image says you're violent, if the self-image says you, all you're ever going to be is all that stuff, I've got to go back and undo. i got to literally reconstruct the self-image. i got to expose them to things uh, within themselves that they never knew about themselves, that they should have known as early as five, four, five, six years old. I've got to go back and show it to them. Look, you're this, you're that, you're, and, and literally rebuild it. We need to stop. What, 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 is, it, what is it that Frederick Douglass said, he said, it is better to build strong children than to repair broken men. We've got to get to this. We've got to stop getting to the point. We, we love to sit up and uh, go, oh, my God, shaking my head, horrible, evil, ridiculous, trifling when a black male does something totally atrocious, especially when it's done to a black woman. I'm one of the first people that's going to call it out because one of our, uh, to me, my ultimate responsibility as a man is to protect the woman. Number one, if I can't protect the family, if I can't be a, a person who can give a safe space to the woman, I can't expect anything else to fall in line. I can't suspect, I can't expect what, 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 what everybody's arguing about, submission, which is actually trust. Uh, that's all submission is. I trust you to lead and I trust you to allow me to do my thing, my thing, which is equally important as your thing. And when you do it right, you don't have to ask for it. She will just line up. But the thing is, you've got to create that safe space. So that's the thing that we're not doing. We're not creating a safe space. We're not creating a, a primary environment of security. We're not. Get, see, the woman can't be who she is if she doesn't feel safe because she'll immediately become a defensive and she will start to emit uh, she will start to emit masculine energy and she start to behave as if she's trying to be you. I'm talking to the men trying to be you. And it's a natural instinct. If there's no man to protect me, I got to protect myself. If there's no man to provide. I've got to provide for myself. If there's no man to lead, then I have to lead myself. And all these things will emit masculine energy because it's a masculine trait. Now, 
that's not her strength. Can she do it? Black women have proven, obviously, they can do it. But uh, is she at her best when she does it? Absolutely not. That's not the design. The design is for the man to be the masculine energy and the woman to be the feminine. The woman is the incubator. The woman is the one who comes along and takes whatever she is given and multiplies it. You give her groceries, she gives you a meal. You give her a house, she gives you a home. You plant your seed in her physical womb, she gives you 40 weeks later a child. You plant your vision in her spiritual womb and she will birth things unimaginable. But we never get that far. Because we're arguing over who's going to pay what and who's going to go 50-50 and who's going to do all this here. When the natural order of me wanting to be the best version of myself will automatically put me in the place I need to be. And here's the thing, ladies. I'm going to tell you something about that. A little bit off track, but you need to hear this. You don't understand. As we age, the value of the man increases based on his need while the value of the woman on it, you can call it sexual market value, you can call it whatever you want to. The things that will make a man want to be with a woman decreases in time. The things that a woman needs from a man that makes him attractive and want and, 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 and want it actually increases as he ages. Better stability and finance, better leadership and wisdom better willingness to control more stable in an environment not running all over the place he gets he get the woman's physical attraction and energy diminishes as she ages even though and trust me nobody keeps it well like a sister that's not what i'm saying and i'm not here to attack i'm here to try to get you to understand something and it's and, and it's not to settle the last thing i want anyone to do is settle but what you got to understand is that brother when you're looking at him and he's 28 years old, he's still extremely young. And he's trying to find himself. And you, you, you need to look at him. He, he needs to have a vision. He needs to have an idea of where he's going. He's not going to be there yet, but he needs to have an, a, a vision. He needs to have impeccable work ethic. He's got to be up grinding every day, trying to get better. He's got to have character integrity, meaning that he's going to stick to the things that he says he believes in to, to the point of death almost, where he is just not going to bend because that way you know when he tells you this is what he's going to do, he, that's what he's going to do. And he, he needs to have a plan. Now, here's the thing. When you get with him, he's going to be a guy probably making 40000 a year. Median, the median... Earning of, of black men is 44000 but, but But bear with me a minute. If he's got all those things, if he will protect you, if he will cover you, if he will stand in and put you before himself and you, the children that you may create before yourself and you see in him a work ethic, he's the one. He doesn't have what you want him to have yet, but every day that you stay with him, he gets closer and he gets more of it. By the time you get to the point where I think uh, all the studies out there on this topic says roughly around 30, there's an exchange from adult, from the beginning of adulthood to 30, uh, the female has a, an extremely high sexual uh, market value. And it's not just about sex. This is just what it's called. Sexual means gender, gender market value. Let's call it that. She just simply has to be. And if she has the thing, she's more. The guy can be attractive and a woman will want to sleep with him. But his market value, because she's going to ask, you know, outside of what you can put down in the bedroom, what's going on. But the dude is like, oh, my God, I got a dime. I got a nine. I got an eight. Oh, my God. But as that get, after you get to 30, it starts to even out. You get to 35, the male surpasses in market value. This is social research that's done. The, th the things that make a man want a woman start to decline after she turns 35. That's why you see a bunch of dudes dipping down and going low. Because if I'm going to go for only what I can see and sense, it looks better when it's 24 than it does when it's 44. Here's where your value is. Your value is 
in choosing someone and being a part of the building process. I'm not saying care of no man. I'm definitely not telling you to take care of no dude. What I'm telling you is, depending on where you're not, my older sisters, if you get him, he should have a little bit more uh, going on for himself. But again, what's the vision? What's its work ethic? How does he treat you? How do, more, I mean, his tone. What is his tone? I mean, how does he handle you? These are all things we need to look at. Those other things, there's not a man that I know that's in my circle that when the right woman touches him, he won't go to the mat for and do everything for you. You ain't got to ask him, are you going to take care of me? He's going to take care of you to the full extent of his ability. Here's the crazy thing. Do you realize the, the power you have to pour into a man that's willing to take care of you to ensure he's better able to take care of you? This thing was designed for us to work together. It wasn't designed for you to come along, toss nothing on it, toss nothing out there, and then turn around and say, man, I got me an A1. He can do all this stuff. That, go back and look. When men were seeking out women to marry, they were looking for women who brought something with them. Even if it was their family connections. So then you must ask yourself, if I'm going to demand so much, what can I mean? Tell I'm going to tell you, if it's me, start with your loyalty. No, start with respect. Respect the way you handle me, the way you talk to me, the way you handle my private affairs and my business, all of those things. That. Second of all, after respect, then it is you've got to have loyalty. I'm not going to betray you. Don't betray me. Don't betray me in any way. I'm going to protect you to the utmost. Do the same for me. Next is be supportive and be my peace. I don't want to go to war to provide for my house and come home and have to fight at home. I don't want to have to drag you kicking and screaming down this path to the vision destination. It's that simple with me. I will die for you if you bring that to me. Simple. It's difficult to get because we've put our women in such a situation in which most of the women dudes, by the time you've got to them, they've got years under their belt of doing it themselves. Or they got years of having harrows, dudes that just sit back and let them run the house and do whatever they want to and okay baby them all day. And so now when someone comes in and is actually ready to take the mantle of leadership, they don't understand that. What the hell? What you mean? And it's hard for them to let go of the reins because they've held them for so long. And that's on us because we collectively over time generationally have set up and stepped back and abdicated our roles it's time to reclaim them it's time to stop passing blame on both sides men i'm gonna ask you to make it start with you if you're the leader in anything you do in this world most men understand sports <coughs> on sports let's talk football in the nfl the players are actually the one on the field performing and doing and having to follow what they've been trained and taught to do and given by their offensive coordinators, their position coaches, their head coach, all that, right? Who gets fired if the team doesn't perform? Buck stops with you. No coach <clears throat> will sit up and, and keep respect, even if he's not, he's got a team out there that's just – sucking it up. I mean, stinking up the whole field. No coach will ever be respected if he throws that team under the bus and says, it's their fault. They didn't listen. I gave them the plan and they didn't play. They played horrible today. Now, he might go in and tell them that, but he's going to say in front of that mic, we've got to play better. It starts with what? Me. Well, we got to play better. It starts with us. Ladies, you don't get a pass. We've got to do better. Because you know what? It goes back to what I started this with. We are not preparing our children to win. 
stop the infighting, stop all of the uh, negative uh, energy, stop going for unrealistic expectations. 6% of men, 6% of black men make six figures. Or we would have a high median uh, income than 44,000. We've got to learn how to increase that number. And we've got to understand that sitting up saying this and, you know, some of the stuff I hear just totally blows my mind about what women are saying they're going to date and what they're going to accept. Okay, so if it's only 6% men making six figures and 85% of the women saying they're only going to date a six-figure man, y'all do realize y'all sharing the same dude, right? And if he's sharing y'all and y'all don't know it, that's the character you want to be with because he's got the bag. And then not, and I guarantee you, you're not getting the bag. You're getting him to spend the bag on you sometime. That's not building. I'm not saying go out there and get your bum. I'm saying go out there and build. That's a two-person responsibility. You build families together. Now, each has a role, and each, each needs to be clear in the role. We need to learn how to come together because our children are suffering. We are suffering from a massive identity crisis, and we are losing because of it. Look, on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I could literally talk on this all day. <clears throat> and I've got enough of the lectures coming up uh, and interviews coming up. i got to protect my voice this week. But anyway... I wanted to drop that on you. I hope that you guys can really, truly understand where I'm coming from with this. But on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I said at the beginning, if you believe in what we do, show some love and support. There's so much more work that needs to be done. There's so much that need to, need, needs to be gathered and put together more programs to be built, more research to be done. Um, once again, thank you guys for dropping in. Um, I would love for you to leave your comments. I'm pretty sure a lot of you don't agree with me. Uh, but you know what I said when I came here. I didn't come here to be popular. Uh, when I started doing this thing 14 years ago, I didn't, I, I didn't come to be popular. I didn't come to be like. I didn't come to get a million subscribers. I came to teach. I came to share. I came to learn as well. But ultimately, I came to bring truth to power. And that's the only way we're going to win. Lying to ourselves, blaming everybody else except ourselves, is never going to produce the results that we desire. That's it on me. Again, thank you guys for letting me have your attention. On that note, I'm out. You guys have a blessed remainder of your day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.